All right. Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, and welcome to the Gut Health Challenge. Um, I will share my screen here so that we can get going, and Stephanie and I will introduce ourselves. So I am Liz Greenfield. I'm a registered nurse for a couple of decades plus, and I have a master's of science in anesthesia, actually. I've been a nurse anesthetist for 15 years. Hi, Ron. Thanks for joining. Um, and I'm certified in functional medicine through the Institute for Functional Medicine. And I'd like to introduce Stephanie Doty, who is a critical part of my team, and she's a holistic nutritionist. So say hello, Stephanie. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. So uh, like Liz mentioned, I'm a holistic nutritionist. I'm also a personal chef. And I've been in the health and wellness space for about 25 years. Um, I am looking forward to just sharing information with you this week about um, seasonal food and meal planning tips and tricks. And uh, just looking forward to talking with you all within the group. Well, Stephanie and I share a passion for, hi, Ron. Hi, how's it going? Great, thanks. I'm recording the call just so you know. We just got started one minute ago. Um, Perfect. And I just wanted to share with everyone who's going to be watching the recording as well that what Stephanie and I really share as a core value is empowering people to understand what they can do to optimize their own health from a nutrition perspective. So when we put people through programs, I use advanced functional medicine labs to identify imbalances in the body. And Stephanie is brilliant at helping people implement whatever dietary recommendations I make for them so that it's easy, doable. Uh, most of the time when a hundred percent of the time, actually, when people finish their first appointment with her, they have taken a huge sigh of relief, realizing that it is possible to eat a healthy diet and um, it can be simplified. And she'll talk more tomorrow about how to do that as well. So we wanted to make that a focus of this challenge. So first off, just to touch upon what health issues are associated with less than optimal gut health, the short answer is everything. If you have anything wrong with you, anything out of balance, it is related to your gut health. So we always think about digestive issues on the top of our minds when we're thinking about gut health, but that's really scratching the surface. Our immune system is 70 to 80% of our immunity happens in our gut. So poor immunity, skin issues like eczema, psoriasis, asthma. I'll talk in detail about how autoimmunity is related to poor gut health. Resistant weight loss is frequently seen with like candida overgrowth in the gut. So that's a big one. Hormonal issues. I'll talk about on day four, how gut health is related to hormones and depression and anxiety, all of our neurotransmitters are made in the gut. So that's a big one. Even the research shows that taking a great probiotic can help improve the symptoms of depression and anxiety. Joint pain, uh, I'll talk about that in relationship to the leaky gut. Insomnia and just frequent illnesses, again, because of the immune system being concentrated in the gut. So like thyroid is a big one. Anything that you can think about that's ailing you is related to gut health. So again, how is gut health related to overall health? I think it's super important just to be aware that we actually have more microbial DNA in our bodies than human DNA. So when you really think about it, we're not isolated, sterile beings walking around trying to shield ourselves from the world outside around us. In reality, our health is a reflection of the interaction between our bodies and, as in our genetics, and our environment, meaning what do we come into contact with in the outside world and what is living in and on our bodies because we actually can influence what is what our microbial life is like inside of our bodies. So inside the gut where the microbes live, they digest soluble fiber that we eat. We cannot digest fiber on our own. I worked with a um, 
a general surgeon for many years who concentrated on gut surgeries. And she always used to say it's all about fiber. At the time, I thought she meant mostly the insoluble fiber, which is like, if you think about the skin of an apple, that's insoluble fiber. It just acts as a broom in the body. It brushes everything out and cleans the intestines and helps us have healthy bowel movements. However, the soluble fiber, which is like, if you think the soluble fiber is what would dissolve in water, the microbes inside of our gut will use that soluble fiber as food. And when it ingests the soluble fiber, the byproduct that's created, namely short chain fatty acids are used by the intestines as fuel for a healthy gut lining. This is an awesome example of how important it is that we have a diverse microbiome and a healthy microbiome because we need, we're relying on those microbes to give our gut fuel for a healthy gut lining. When the gut lining is compromised, we get inflammation throughout the whole body. And I'll spend uh, a, a day of the challenge talking about that. I've already mentioned that 70 to 80% of our immunity is in our gut. The gut brain connection is being studied more and more and more. We take antidepressants, but in reality, all of those neurotransmitters are produced in our gut. So if we don't have optimal gut health, we are not producing a healthy amount of neurotransmitters. And some people in the health and wellness field will go as far as to say that our, the microbes living in our gut are responsible for our thoughts. Crazy to think about that, but perhaps true. We are wildlife managers in the sense that everything that we eat is feeding our microbiome. So when we ingest food, it is food for the bugs that are living in our gut. If we are drinking diet soda or something that has aspartame in it, we are murdering the healthy microbes in our gut as an example. So we want the most diverse flora possible for optimized health. We want a lot of different kinds of bugs living in our gut. Why? Because we are exposed to the natural world around us and some of the things can harm us if we can't build an adequate response when our body is exposed to those things. So the more diverse flora, the more different types of microbes that we have living in our gut, the more, the higher the chance that we can respond to whatever it is that comes our way. If we don't have a lot of healthy microbes in there and we're exposed to foreign invaders, we just don't have the army, the team of microbial life that we need to respond to those things. Same thing if we have more bad bugs than good bugs, which is what we see a lot when I do the GI map test on people, we can actually see they've got tons of harmful bugs and not enough good guys. So whole nutritious foods feed the good bugs. The standard American diet, meaning white things, white flour and white sugar feed bugs that compromise our health. So we can influence our health by what we eat in this manner. Your action steps for the challenge for the next five days. You wanna eat whole foods and Stephanie's gonna talk in detail about eating seasonally. You want to eat the widest variety of whole foods that you can so that you can promote diverse flora. You want to feed all different kinds of healthy bugs so that they can do wonderful things inside your body. Action step, reduce or consider eliminating processed foods for the next five days and maybe beyond. What you put inside your body and when you do that is informational instructions for your cells. This is very popular to talk about food as medicine. It's more than medicine. These are instructions for your body, the things contained inside these foods. Like if you look at the broccoli, for example, has a different instructional offering for your body than a bell pepper does. Again, we want to eat a wide variety of foods to maintain optimal health because each one of these items is, is providing something different and wonderful for the body. And brightly colored foods contain more of what are called polyphenols. Polyphenols are something present in plants 
that protect it from bugs and sunlight. And so when we ingest these things, we take on the beneficial health effects that we're serving the plant in our own bodies. So Stephanie will talk a lot more, but local seasonal foods are fresher. They contain more polyphenols and they have a more robust offering for your body than something that's been transported from far away. The oral microbiome is so important. So it's the first kind of exposure that um, food gets as it comes into the body. And we have obviously a whole microbiome in the oral cavity. So in the crypts of the tongue, particularly in the back of the tongue, we have bacteria living there. Again, a great example of the fact that we are not sterile beings walking around trying to protect ourselves from everything around us. We want those bacteria to live there. When we eat foods that are high in nitrates, like beets and kale, those bacteria will convert the nitrite, nitrates into nitrites. When we swallow, if we have adequate stomach acid, those nitrites that are the result of that conversion from the bacteria, the healthy bacteria in the tongue, they become nitric oxide. What is nitric oxide? It is a miracle molecule only discovered in 1998 that regulates almost every physiologic function in the body. It's a gas in the body. It goes across cell membranes instantly. So it is able to give lots of instructions to the cells in the body very quickly. One of its main roles is to regulate how dilated blood vessels are. So you want dilated blood vessels so you get lots of oxygen delivery to the tissues. This is why athletes drink beet juice because they want to promote nitric oxide in the body so that they have lots of oxygen being delivered to their muscles when they perform. So your action step is that if you are using mouthwash, like an antiseptic mouthwash, such as Listerine, it is important to stop that immediately because it is killing the wonderful bacteria that live in the crypts of the tongue. It's well studied that if you use mouthwash for seven days, your blood pressure will increase. And this is why it's because we're, we need those healthy bacteria to be there. So optimizing your oral microbiome is super important. And you can do that by, I use um, a toothpaste called Biocidin, and that is a biofilm busting toothpaste um, that really helps keep the healthy bacteria thriving and getting rid of the bad ones, tongue scraping, oil pulling. You'll get an email after today's um, challenge and it will have links to those some of those products if you're interested in that you can also message me to learn more so a big focus on today's presentation is on stomach acid it is absolutely the key to health acid blockers are the third most widely prescribed class of drugs worldwide and that's because there is a myth that when we experience heartburn, we need to block the production of stomach acid. The reality of this situation is that we actually most often have inadequate stomach acid when we experience the sensation of heartburn. And that's because the upper esophageal sphincter is waiting for the signal of adequate stomach acid to close. So if we don't have adequate stomach acid and that never happens, the acid, the sphincters stay open and the acid has the opportunity to reflux back up into the esophagus and cause the sensation of heartburn. When we take acid blockers, we further reduce stomach acid. These were never meant to be taken longer than six weeks. And in fact, insurance used to not cover a longer than six week prescription for acid blockers. Why? Remember now we just talked lots about nitric oxide and adequate stomach acid and acidic pH is required for the nitrites to be converted into nitric oxide. So this is why it's been well studied that people who take long-term acid blockers have an astronomically higher chance of having a cardiac event or stroke because they are not producing adequate nitric oxide. 
Stomach acid is the body's first pass at sterilizing food so that it doesn't make us sick. We eat foods that are full of stuff. Even if we wash it, we need stomach acid to kill bugs on our food. Stomach acid starts breaking down food so that nutrients can be absorbed. A lot of, in particular, women come to me with hair loss and they're wondering what the heck is going on? Why am I losing my hair? A big reason is that they don't have adequate stomach acid and they're not absorbing the nutrients in the food that they eat. We need that pH to foster production of nitric oxide, like I've said many, many times already. And we also want to keep intestinal bacteria where it belongs. And I'll go into more of how that's connected to IBS in just a moment. Our stomach acid naturally decreases as we age. Stress is probably the biggest root cause out there for problems, health problems, because number one, it diverts blood flow away from the digestive system and we produce less stomach acid. Whether we're running away from a lion or we're upset about something someone said to us or stressed out from work, our body doesn't know the difference, but the response is the same. We are not focused on optimal digestion and we are not producing adequate stomach acid when we're under long-term stress, especially. Over-exercise is a big one. As a former athlete myself, I used to practice way too hard for way too long. I personally experienced gut permeability as a result of this and was not properly absorbing nutrition because again, when you train too hard or too long, you don't have adequate blood flow focused on the digestive system and you won't produce adequate stomach acid. Consequences of low stomach acid, inadequate nitric oxide, increased risk of illness, because like I said, the food, the microbes on food that we don't want to be ingesting are not killed, poor nutri nutrient absorption, and harmful microbes can actually establish residency in the digestive system when we don't have enough uh, stomach acid. This includes candida. If you're a person who craves carbs and sugar all the time, high likelihood that you have a candida overgrowth and SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And so maybe you've heard of SIBO, maybe not. This is huge. 90% of people with an IBS diagnosis actually have SIBO. And that's because their root cause is inadequate stomach acid, allowing bacteria to make its way into the small intestine and colonize there. Symptoms, a lot of bloating. SIBO is gas producing. And so people experience a lot of bloating from the fact that those bacteria living where they don't belong cause gas. They produce gas there. So people get belly distension, a lot of abdominal pain or discomfort, diarrhea, and actually constipation and resistant weight loss are highly associated with SIBO, fatigue, and weakness, mostly from poor nutrient absorption. Again, this, this is relevant for about 90% of people with an IBS diagnosis. It's under-recognized because it's not tested for in the conventional model. People with IBS and SIBO get scoped up and down and they get told, well, everything looks normal. You must just be depressed and here's your antidepressant when actually they have SIBO and it's an easy and inexpensive test and it is not difficult to get uh, SIBO under control and really resolve symptoms. These are my happiest clients when they realize what's going on and that there is something that they can do about it. This is a big root cause for people. Action step over the next five days, try taking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar mixed with water during your meals just to promote uh, good acid in there when you're digesting food. If you would like to do an actual stomach acidity test, ask me about it. It's I'll send you the capsules to do it with. It's super easy and you'll know within five minutes flat whether or not you have adequate stomach acid. This is the gut repair bundle that I put together, particularly for this challenge. These products are top of the line um, for everyone who sh shows up on labs to have gut permeability, inflammation, poor immunity in the gut. I always recommend the GI balance. These Zymogen products are the best that the market 
offers as far as um, the purity, the third party testing, the manufacturing of these products and the research that's done on their effects on human health. Omegas like EPA, DHA, they actually don't understand the mechanism of action of this, but taking fish oil, a good quality EPA, DHA, it's good quality fish oil is really important. Just as a side note, 25% of uh, supplements out there on the market don't even contain the active ingredient that's listed on the bottle. Many times if you buy garbage fish oil, it's full of fish that has is toxic um, or like soybean oil, for example, they can just fill those capsules with soybean oil. Supplements are not FDA regulated and they can literally put whatever they want in there unless it's third party tested. Nobody is checking to see what's actually in there. This product far different. It is wonderful. It promotes diverse flora in the gut. Curcumin is overall anti-inflammatory, so I love that they combine these two things, and I highly recommend it for gut repair or gut maintenance. The ProBioMax Daily, again, highly researched probiotic. Great if you're not doing labs and you just want, like people ask me all the time, what do you recommend for a probiotic? If you don't know what's happening in your gut, this is what I recommend and this bundle is something that can be taken daily forever just to promote overall gut health. If you would like to have this put together in med packs, um, if you didn't already purchase it and you want it just in tear away day by day packs, I'm super happy to do that for you. Just let me know. And don't forget that you can use your promo code fall 20 to get 20% off anything in my e-store until the 27th or probably the 28th, the, the end of the challenge. I obligatory for me to say that what I've presented today is not medical advice. It does not diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease, um, but it sure can help you feel healthier and live life more optimally. So that is it for today's presentation. Thank you, Liz. That was a wealth of information. <laughs> Any questions? Well, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I, I kind of went quickly. I knew it was a lot of information. And so I just wanted to make sure that I had time to get it all out there. And um, if there's more questions that I can answer, or you want to learn more about what Stephanie and I are doing together in the 16 week long programs, please reach out. You will have a medical symptom questionnaire attached to your email that you can fill out just to get a sense of where your overall health is and how um, systemically your health is being affected. If you get a score grade 12 reflects overall good health. If you get a score greater than that, you know that there's something going on. A score greater than 30 shows like a need for attention. If you're over 50, you've got some major systemic issues that should be addressed. So, you know, it, I won't go over that, obviously, personally with anyone during the challenge. But if you want to reach out to me because you're concerned based on your score on that medical symptom questionnaire, please let me know. If you did not receive the fall gut healing recipe ebook from Stephanie, let me know because that is absolutely fabulous. It's a must and it will help you a lot as far as knowing what easy things you can prepare for gut health uh, this season. I think that's it. Stephanie, anything to add? No, I think that's, that's good coverage for today. All righty. I will see. I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye.